Um, as Bitcoin becomes more and more popular and more and more people are using it, we're already getting the problem now with the blockchain getting congested in yes. you know, busy time. So there's been the talk of doing a fork. Yes. If it goes down the path of actually doing a fork, how will they, they roll that out? Like, will it be something that will happen overnight or it will be over 12 months? And if you own quite a lot of Bitcoin, how long would you have to have before you would have to, like, change it over to the new, the new coin? For fork it, fork it over. For? All right. So um, how many of you have heard of this concept of forks? Okay, great. So quite a few. And uh, how many of you are worried? Oh, a few. Okay, good. So generally not too much fear, uncertainty in that particular area. I just released a, a video on YouTube last week called Forkology, a science of forks for newbies. And it's an entire topic describing what a fork is, how it works, why it happens, and what do you do with it. But the bottom line is this. If any cryptocurrency forks, then what happens is the end of the blockchain forks. Right? So imagine my arm is the blockchain, my elbow is the genesis block, and it builds up, and then it bifurcates at the top. Now, if you had money here, that is the common history of both sides. Meaning that both sides recognize that you had money in the past, meaning you have money on both sides. I'll use another little analogy. Jean-Luc Picard gets onto the transporter station with five coins in his pocket. As usual, a transporter malfunction occurs. Right? Now, down on the planet, Jean-Luc Picard materializes, but up on the Enterprise, Jean-Luc doesn't dematerialize. Uh oh, we have two Jean-Luc Picards, both of whom claim to be the original. <laughs> and one of them wants to call the other one Jean-Luc Classic. But there's a lot of disagreement and they file claims with the Patent and Trademark Office because they both claim to be Jean-Luc Picard, the original. But here's the interesting thing. How many coins they have in their pocket. They both have five coins. Now, it may be that those coins have different value on the surface versus on the ship, but they both have five coins. If one of them spends those coins, then the other one still has their coins. And so they have now two different futures, even though they shared a common past. And so one of them can go broke by spending all their coins, and the other one still has five coins and nothing's changed. What happens on one side doesn't affect the other. There will be some disagreement, however, if they fix the malfunction in the transporter and remerge the two Jean-Luc Picards, because the one on the ship who didn't spend any of his coins will be rather annoyed at the other one who spent all of his coins and gained a few pounds because they were eating cake with them. <laughs> so when they merge back, you have some nasty problems with the uniform not fitting. But the bottom line is, if you have coins before, you have coins after on both forks. The shared common history is one. You don't have to do anything. What you have to be very careful is that your clone doesn't open any new debt or you know, create any situations that might affect your future. Right? So if you have money on both of the forks and you try to move money from one of the forks, there is a risk called a replay attack, where your transaction that you made intending to move on one of the forks is identical to the same transaction that could be done on the other fork, and someone copies it over. So your money gets spent on both forks. That is called a replay. It's not double spending because it only got spent once on each fork.